Look at me. What do you see? Is it pleasing to your eye? Take a deep breath. How do you feel? Does the space between my eyes bring you comfort? Do you find anguish in my smile? Does my lapel jacket make you think of your mother? Does my table make you feel at ease? Look at this chair. I mean, what can it hold? Do its angles draw you in? Does it make you think of swimming? Does it make you want to reach out and touch? How do you spend your days? How do you pass this thing we call time in this new reality? I don't know about you, but I feel closer to the truth than I've ever been. I mean, in a world where movement is restricted, touch forbidden, at a time when where you are is where you look. I, I feel the tenets of a new aestheticism rapidly overpowering my senses. I crave beauty to witness and embody. It is my meaning and my virtue. The philosopher Henri Bergson, he wrote about how we measure time and its relationship to space, about how time and space are intrinsically linked. I mean, is there some business here with this hourglass? It would be cool if it was. Because time, in the Western conception, is understood through units of measurement, marked by numbers. So we've come to visualize time numerically, numbers on a clock, on your phone screen, on your microwave. Numbers are used to quantify units, primarily of matter, but also of ideas, of emotion, of, of states of being. A number represents a distinct unit or a collection of units of physical, conceptual, or representational matter that can be added or subtracted or otherwise manipulated to become more or less of what we previously knew it to be. It's a pretty pedestrian concept to grasp when you're thinking and talking about things we can see and touch. Four bags of rice, 22 light switches, 38 books, 87 pairs of gloves. Well, what happens when the substance we want to quantify is abstract or has become immaterial because we can't hold it? What about lust? What about joy? What about the bodies of the dead? What about time? When we don't have the physical matter to quantify a unit, we visualize it as a point in space. Time is in space, which has become, which used to be so mutable and vast. And now space is, it's this. Your immediate surroundings, what you can see. The world is now the space where you live. No less, no more. And so I ask, how can all the units of life, of thought, of emotion, of memory, be contained in this space? How can we keep track of time when number loses meaning? How can we maintain order and not get swept away by the omnipotent, menacing, amorphous hurricane of feeling. Assigning points in space. I visualize points of meaning. I see myself. I see bright lines. I see anxiety in my countertops and lust in my doorknobs. I see Australia in my chin and my middle school principal in my carpet and regret in my shower head and climate change in my couch cushions and a rotting deer corpse in my curtain. 
and the great, messy, ongoing, life-affirming, life-destroying migration of human bodies in my shop drawer. I see victory in my condiments. <laughs> I see surprise parties in the brown stain in the ceiling by the vent. <laughs> I see an art museum in the bathroom mirror and lateness in my freezer and cardiac arrest in the pipe under the sink and heartbreak in a teaspoon and travel and a lampshade and childhood in the pressure cooker. The world is in my home. The whole of humanity is here. Every point has meaning. And so I clean and arrange and decorate my space so that clarity and symmetry and pleasure washes over everything, over all the contours of my mind. And I can finally be at rest. I have made the world a beautiful place. And so, I am no longer afraid to live. <laughs>